A very warm welcome to a very special edition of the Magpie Circle podcast this week, where we are joined from Eindhoven in Holland by one of our former managers, Ricardo Moniz. Ricardo, a very, very warm welcome. Thank you. Delighted to see you. Um, this is going to be a really interesting one, um, quite recent. Um, in the brief chats that we've had, your huge passion for football, um, your huge passion for the way football should be played. And what I first want to start to develop a little bit is that connection between yourself and Notts County and Jimmy Cyril, because that dates right back to the 1980s um, when Jimmy actually uh, invited you to come over to Nottingham. So let, let, let's just talk through that, how you became connected with Jimmy Cyril back in 1984. He called me because his uh, inspirator, Will Curver, you know, the, the legend of the, of the skills, he connected my name with him. So it was. And um, I had him on the line. It was a great uh, special energy through the telephone. But unfortunately, it didn't went through. But from, from the time I know his name, of course, from uh, North County. But later, I still have the paper here, <laughs> 1984. But later, when I came to, to North County, yeah, the first one you see on the, on the, on the wall, you know, his, his, uh, his painting, was Jimmy Searle. So uh, straight away, I had that connection. Uh, it was no coincidence. D d unbelievable. Just show us that cutting again and just hold it up to the camera so we can all have a quick look again, if that's all right, Ricardo. So this is a Dutch newspaper cutting. Yeah. Which was reporting that you had... Did you come over to Nottingham? Because you were playing for Eindhoven then, yeah? I played, I played for Eindhoven, yeah. I played uh, two and a half, I was 70 years, I was very young in the, in the first team. That was not PSV Eindhoven, it was FC Eindhoven. It was a um, championship. Yeah. And uh, I could go to PSV, but I choose for, for playing in the championship because you want to play every week. So and after two and a half years, uh, I had a little bit of trouble with the club. And uh, Will Curver, the, the guru of the skills, he had a connection with Jimmy Cyril, also with Ferguson, eh, the friend of Cyril. And so my name fall. And then I had him on the line. I, I should get a trial, you know. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't went through. So did, did you end up coming to Nottingham or not? Or was it just... No, 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 no. Yeah. No. But I the mean, connection was made. J Jimmy was a very, very charismatic figure. Yeah. And in many respects, he was a long way ahead of his time. Because um, in, in that time when he got Notts County into the top flight with Howard Wilkinson, yeah. they would play the match on the Saturday afternoon. And then on a Sunday, he would go to the local airport, East Midlands Airport, get a flight over to Holland or France or wherever, and he would go and look at other fixtures. He obviously was a connection with Will Curver. But yeah. in many respects, years ahead of his time. And a lot of the younger players, I'm sure Dean Yates would have told you this, that when they were 12 and 13, there was this yeah. little man on the sidelines doing these yeah. little tricks. And it was Jimmy Cyril. I know. But he, look, in, in Holland you have Johan Cruyff in Ajax, so he presents a DNA. And Ajax still follow that DNA. And so you have a lot of clubs where big personalities are, like Beckenbauer, Eusebio, they put the DNA. But clubs go away from the DNA. You understand? So when, you, when, when I, I, I had lessons from Cruyff, my other hero, Will Cover is one, and Cruyff. And the philosophy was, was described on one paper. So the philosophy from Barcelona, and they play with 50% homegrown talents. Messi, Iniesta, Xavi, Piquet in that time. It was a simple, simple one-page philosophy. And so I think a lot of clubs make it very complicated. And they fall away from the DNA of the club. And that's why I was so inspired when uh, Ray and Aileen invited me with Ian Roberts and uh, Matt Alexander. That was my first connection with the club. Yeah, they wanted to stay loyal to that philosophy. And they also wanted me to play attacking football. Although I had only six games to stay in League One. And I'm still sick of the relegation. I'm still, I'm also feeling responsible of the relegation. And I think because that happened, it comes later, uh, you lost a, a kind of credit to maintain the philosophy. Because for, for example, when you stayed in, you had more credit. And you can build on the pure philosophy of playing attacking attractive football. And uh, that was always my idealism. And I think that's unique in, in, in Notts County. It's not only the first club, but it's also Jimmy Cyril's club. 
and we and we always have to follow the people like Jimmy, what they put on the DNA of the club, and I didn't, I couldn't finish that. Just before we go into Notts County, um, I mean we are a similar age. You look a lot younger than me, but um, I remember seventy four, seventy eight, the two Dutch teams getting to World Cup finals on foreign soil against West Germany and Argentina. And I used to watch those games with my dad. My dad was a massive fan of Dutch football. And, and Cruyff was always the single biggest name. But in our household, it was kind of Johan Neeskins, who was kind of just half a notch below Cruyff, but a world-class player. Um, and, and, and that philosophy of Holland at the time was, in many respects, a long way ahead of its time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you mentioned the two um, opposites. So you had Cruyff, that was the elegant representative of total football, going out from ball possession. And Neeskis was, in fact, also part of the total football. That is, when we lose the ball, Holland in that time, we put pressure. We had a five seconds rule. So Neeskis was, in, that, in this interpretation, the first one who, who, who hunted for the ball. When you see, for example, on YouTube, uh, 74 hunting for the ball. You see the whole team sometimes going with five players to press one one opponent. So they were ahead of the, of that time with big personalities. And there the total football existed. I was 10 years, and that that time um, inspired my way of thinking. So what Cruyff and Neeskens and Michels did for my for my life, in fact, was not only give me a lot of uh, confidence because Ajax and Feyenoord they won a lot of things but also you were very proud and also there you see that Holland became and you see it now a more ball possession country one touch no risk don't penetrate in the final third less personalities up front less personalities in the back so you always have to take um, responsibility that you say okay Cruyff we owe you something uh, Neeskens we owe you something because where's the new Cruyff Where's the new nations? You understand? And, I mean, and that, that original uh, hunger of personalities I found in Notts County. We had a staff with Pilkinson, uh, uh, Pilks, the, the, the second keeper coach. Yeah, crazy for football. Mike Edwards, crazy for football. Alan Smith, crazy for Roy Carroll. Uh, my staff, Dave Kevin, um, Dean Yates, my medical staff. So it was uh, that I like in England, they are really lovers of the game. And when I showed the old days, eh, or if it was Matthews or, or Garincha or Pelé or, or Cruyff or Bobby Moore, Bobby Charlton, George Best, they all watched with big eyes um, for the love of the game. Gary Jones, I never forget that. Gary Jones, he loved it. And uh, you see that only in England. And a lot of other countries are more clinical. And that's why, for me, it's a big disappointment that I couldn't fulfill my task to continue longer to work in England. But I take the responsibility, again, for the relegation and for what happened later. I take for big, because that's me. I'm always responsible. But it was a pure football uh, environment. So I have a very warm relationship with England. It's interesting you mentioned that total football approach. And... Um when Jimmy was with Howard Wilkinson uh, in the period from 81 to 83 when they got into the top flight. They played a, a kind of your, your the total, I don't know whether you would have seen many games from Notts County in that era, but they played a total football approach and it was the, the, the goalkeeper couldn't kick the ball out, it was rolled out, centre half, full back split, centre midfielder drop, switch over, pass the ball out. But because Notts were quite an unfashionable club, they very rarely got any um, true respect for it but there was one famous game when they played Ipswich Town uh, Franz Tyson and Arnold yeah. Muren yeah. used to run the show for Ipswich oh, yeah, yeah. Bobby Robson was the manager I know this was a famous game Knotts yeah. went to Ipswich they won 4-1 in Ipswich one of the goals they won 4-1 one of the goals was a 13 pass movement with the goalkeeper throwing the ball out all first touch passes all the way down the pitch scored no Ipswich player touched it took about 11 seconds 13 passes goalkeeper threw it out one end of the pitch to the other all the Ipswich fans broke out into applause and that was that was very much a seminal moment for Knotts and the, and, and the football that Jimmy Cyril and Howard Wilkinson 
um, put together, which was very, the way you talk about the Dutch football, that's what Knots were doing at that time, but never really got the respect for it. Never really got the respect for it. Also not from the own fans? From our own fans, yes. But Knots were a very small, our average crowd then was seven or 8,000. Manchester United, 40,000. Yeah. So we were a very, very small club. And kind of, if Liverpool had scored that goal, yeah. it would still be being shown around the world every year. Every year. And that was half 70s, I think, 1975? Uh, this, like. this, this was 82, 1982. 82. So this would have been just before you nearly joined us. Yeah, I know that Ipswich won the UEFA Cup in that time. That's it. With Alan Brazil eh, up front. That yeah, time. that's right. That's but, right. Uh, you said Jimmy Siddle started to implement that total football in Notts County. Yes. Is that right? Yes. In, in, in the late 70s, when he partnered with Howard Wilkinson, Okay. And they devised the system. Okay, so that's, promoted. That, that's a part of the DNA of the club, in fact, you say. Yes. And where did that, where did that broke? Or did, it didn't continue, it, the, the it, style? It, it broke basically because Jimmy Cyril and Howard Wilkinson, this was Howard Wilkinson's first job. No one had ever heard of him. Um, he, he went to Sheffield Wednesday in 1984. And that and that breakup led to the breakup of that's not not's team, and they struggled. So while Jimmy and Howard were together, yeah. perfect combination, perfect yeah. combination. But when yeah. Howard left and went on yeah. to Sheffield Wednesday to win the Premier League title with Leeds, that was when Knotts had the problems. But it, okay. it, it, interesting talking with you and the approach and Jimmy and Will Curver. But let's now fast forward. So we're going to move it on. Best part of 30 years to 2015. You've had a successful career all over Europe. How did Notts County come about? It was over, um, I worked for Martin Joll at, at Spurs and I have a good friend. Uh, and that time my agent also now is a very good friend. I mean, Adam Capel worked for Spurs. He did a estate agency in the beginning. So everybody <laughs> of us found houses and Adam showed us 10 houses. Edgar Davis Milo, he, he was a big, big, uh, big brother of the of the club. Yeah. So he became agent and he had contact with Matt Alexander. Very nice guy, Matt Alexander. Yes, that's Matt, yes. So the connection started. So uh, Adam brought me, of course, to uh, Nottingham. We were behind the goal in, uh, in the stand. And after a game, I had a meeting with uh, Ray Eileen and Ian Roberts. And Matt Alexander and Adam. And so it existed. So we exactly how we talk now. We talked over philosophy, uh, uh, the emergency to stay up, of course, because it was not only romantic. It was uh, yeah, we need to stay in in League One. And if I was maybe capable to to be manager. Now, so it started. Um, they were very impressed by the philosophy. On the other hand, I'm an attacking coach, as you know. I'm an, uh, I want to, to create as much as possible scoring chances. So how can you mix it with result? Because you are depending on result. And um, to make a long story short, um, it, take th it took three weeks. Because in the beginning I would come. I was confronted with a health threatening yes. situation at home. So I cancelled. Um, because I, had, I was not with my head 100%. But after two weeks Ray called me back. Because he couldn't find another alternative I think and then I did it so I believe I had six games left and um, we draw away I, I remember we draw it was a game that Jamal Campbell Rice yeah played the cross uh, Gary Thompson had in it was one one and Jamal had that special quality for example and he went injured it was the first hit he went injured and Paddy McCord went injured so two players who have the exceptional qualities to stay up I lost and what also was remarkable, and John knows that, the official, that they were not from us. So uh, Jamal was from Sheffield, I believe. Yes. Paddy was from I think Swansea, or I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, no, it doesn't matter, yeah. but we couldn't treat him at the club. You know, we couldn't yeah. treat him the whole day, right. what I want. Yeah. yeah. And they took no risk. So I, I was confronted with a, a total new thing. They were not ours. But I knew even in Gillingham when I had Jamal for 50 minutes on the bench, I could put him in in the, in the final 50 minutes, as you know. 
but even there we had no any influence because the the clubs owed them you know what i mean so they're only they're all already we had unlock because players like Campbell Rice and, and McCord in good shape. That players you need to have that final touch, you know what I mean? So um, that was already a not good beginning. Because you, you got the going into the final two games. The last home game was Doncaster, Doncaster. which you won. Doncaster. So you then won you it. set up the grandstand fit finale at Gillingham. About yeah. four or five thousand Notts County fans went down to Gillingham. Yeah. And and the, the result was basically in your own hands, wasn't it? If you won, we stayed up. Yeah. I think, I think Preston also, something with Preston, yeah. but I, I, I remember something. But, but you got the goal. Yeah. And you're four 1 0 up. Four minutes to go, yeah. With, with four minutes to go. And, 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 and it, 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 I was actually out at the Soccer X convention working, and I was in Jordan out in the, in the first. And I was looking and I was trying to keep up. And I thought, oh, 1 0. You know, four minutes to go, fantastic. And then I lost reception in Jordan on the mobile phone. It all went down. So three, four minutes later, I've looked back, 3-1. And I thought, well, that can't be right. That can't be right. I mean, as it turned out, that was quite a seminal moment for your managerial career at yeah. Knotts when we yeah. look back and then we can talk about that in a moment. But do you relive those last few minutes many times over? Yeah, you look as professional after one week you forget it. But as human, I'm still sometimes can't sleep from it. So big was the disappointment. You understand? So important it was for me to bring success to 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 North County, to the, the the country I love, England. We want to stay, but when because we relegated, it influenced, of course. Yeah, my following year, of course, because when you stay up. As I spoke before, you have more credits. And it was very sp special. Uh, I see it. Dumbaya is hit by his opponent. He falls on his back on the floor. So I think with two minutes regular time, it's free kick from us. Now kicking to, to our stand. I see it there. He, it happened here. There were our fans kicked in there. But instead of kicking in there, it was a free kick in their advantage for Gillingham. Now, and they put the ball in. We cleared the ball. Uh, a left-footed midfield player turned open. Noble have to put pressure, eh? total football principles. Put pressure forwards, don't walk back. Noble was in good shape. Against Doncaster also, he, he scored the 2-1, you remember? Yeah. And, and Gary Thompson, the 1-0. But we dropped off, and after you lose the ball, you must stay out of your box. When we talk over total football. Maybe we were tired. Um, he puts the ball in, and um, yeah, they had him two minutes before time second part between Dumbaya and Balen Baina I believe yeah. and it was 1-1 now and then we collapsed so because it was 1-1 that was already game over but that it became 1-3 was ridiculous because we we had uh, the 0-1 the two minutes before regular time and that are moment, moments what decide your what you, what you say with right you're staying in in knots of course we had the next year, but so many things changed that summer. You know what I mean? Not only in, in the atmosphere, but also in totally renewing the, the, the squad. Too much. We signed too much players. Much too much players. We'll come on to that in a moment. You personally, yeah. you've always wanted to manage in England. Yeah. You've got that chance. Yeah. You've had six or seven games. Six games. Six games. And you've ended up being relegated. Yeah. How, how personally did that affect you? Did, 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 was it a difficult one to come back with or did you just brush Look, it aside and get on with it? Football is my life. And when you do something, you have, I give 100%, not 99, 120%. So every single day since I was five, inspired by Johan Cruyff, it's your life work. So you, you first you practice every day with the wall, get two legs, be the man, watch Cruyff, Watch Holland, become professional. I, I retired too early, 29. I studied physiotherapy. I want to know everything on the body. And I became a young coach. So you build, and you, you know it yourself. You build on something. It, everything is your life works. So it should be. So there's so much passion in what you do. So at the moment that happens, that relegation, yeah, your, 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 your life work breaks. But 
of course you have to continue because I, my, my contract was uh, continuing. I, I believe I signed for three years. Yeah. So in fact, we want to come back. Eh? But of course you, you feel after you relegate that a, a lot of things were changing and you feel yourself responsible. So, um, and that one, two percent of doing no compromises, you know, that infected me. Because look, this meeting also is because of, I don't like to look back. I, l I want to, I learn from Colin Slater. Look forward, keeps me. <laughs> What's your secret? Look forward. So I don't look back on a tragic way, but you must learn from it. And also Notts County must learn from things. You understand? Because Notts County is still existing. And I worked for Red Bull Leipzig, for example. Fourth division, eh? fourth division. Now they play Champions League. So when you learn from the mistakes, when you build and when you have no ego and don't, you don't feel offended, for example, not, you can learn from certain things to come back in no time. So in that way, I'm, I'm still a romantic type. Notts County can come back from the fifth division in, in the Premier League. If you have the right philosophy, the best philosophy, Jimmy Sherrill renewing 2.0, uh, you know what I mean? And, and so Notts County is a special club, they're different, but you must make the philosophy what's different than the rest. What Cruyff did with Barca, end 80s, start 90s, and they won the Champions League. So everything is possible in football, and that's why this is an interesting conversation. We, we must learn from some processes. And I've learned a lot, but I was with my family totally broke when I had to leave on a ridiculous way. The, the way how, the way how I, I was, look, look I, I'm the first one who said we were too low. I think we were 14, 15 yes. on the table. That's too low. That's although we played okay games at home and everybody could see we want to play a style. But when the results stay, stay out and Ray and Aileen go back and they are changing in the top, yeah, then you're vulnerable as coach because of that relegation, of course. That's what you want to say. When you, when you have, have stayed in League One, you had more time. Exactly. And yeah, that's, we, that's, that's unfortunate. It didn't happen. Yeah, that's true. You, you're a huge football, but very passionate about all things football. And you've mentioned Jimmy Sue on many occasions and, and the DNA of Notts County. And I think that was part of the reason why, why Dave Kevin and Dean Yates came in yeah. on your coaching staff yeah. because you, you wanted links with that past of Jimmy and Notts County, correct? Top people. That was, a, that was a demand from Ray and Aileen. They are, and I met them, top people. Hard for the club, um, like Mike Edwards. Shy people. Strong in their, in their heart, but there were other people in Notts County with less heart, but with a big mouth, who destroyed a lot of positive elements because the, the club was very positive. Uh, yeah, Alan Smith, uh, Mike, uh, uh, Dean, uh, the ref, uh, Liam, you know, the, the, from, the, from the church. It yes. was uh, from uh, the medical staff. It was a good unity, football crazy. But Notts must also learn from the past. There were a few snakes in the building. And my, my weakness in football is I'm, I'm from the street. I'm very direct. So when I was clever, I could have stayed maybe, but I don't like an impure thing. The ball is always clean, Maradona said, and so it should be. And in that way, it was also a little bit my direct uh, behavior that it went stronger. And uh, they sacked me after a draw, I believe. Yes, we had right. Newport, 4-3, and then uh, it was over. But when Aileen and Ray left, yeah, it became difficult for me. Let's look at, look at the summer then. So. Relegation at, at Gillingham. There was then a huge turnover, even by Notts County standards, and we turn over a lot of players over, over many years. 14 new signings came in. And in England, we historically have a, a manager, although that is changing. More abroad, you tend to have a head coach. And there are different lines of demarcation when it comes to recruitment. Some, at some clubs, the manager does everything. At other clubs, the manager would do some of it. At some clubs, he does very little of it. Um, so 14 signings. 
there was probably nearly 50% of that of players coming in from abroad. Talk, talk to me, to the fans watching this, of what happened? What was, what was the process with those signings? It was wrong. It was totally wrong. Um, what in fact happened was that, uh, okay, you relegate and there is, well, not panic, but it's hectic. So then everybody goes home. And in the summer, um, Ray already became impatient. We have to sign, to sign, to sign. And I said, you must only sign the exception. And I wanted to keep Gary Jones and Gary Thompson, for example. So this was Gary Jones, war horse of a midfielder, turned out every game. Gary Thompson, the striker. I, want, I wanted to stay because with Hayden Mullins, there was something he had to leave. I don't know why. Williams went back to Liverpool out of my head. Eh? Yeah. Uh, Jamal Campbell Rice was not from us. Paddy yeah. McCord was not from us. Yeah. But those other were injured. So but, you wanted Gary Jones and Gary Thompson. Yeah, you were quite clear what, about that. Yeah, I, for example. Because I think when you change too much, it's not right. So we can better wait and be clever and scout the exception because I was just looking on the table. We had 35 players <laughs> with Alan Smith and uh, Mike Edwards yeah. and Pilks as extra. Yeah. So that, that was so is not, is not good. But when you take somebody from abroad, it must be an exception. And in that case, I also failed because not all the Dutch players, for example, were an extra distribution. They had problems in England. Eh? At least 50% of the players were not used to that competitive uh, three games a week, you know, rhythm. Stanley Aboro was okay, for example. And so it should be. But everybody who is not an exception, you must not uh, take. So, so that's a mistake. But not all the transfers were made by me because Guy Branston... He uh, was a good guy, hardworking guy. But I felt on Ray and Aileen, he had too much to say. You understand? And I was very uh, happy with him in, in, when I came because he was sitting in the room next door, ignored by everybody. So I took him because he was hardworking. He scouted well. He was very uh, proactive, you know what I mean? But I felt when, I, when we came back from holiday, he took too much space. He had too much influence with Ray and Aileen. And I think the manager decides, yeah, yeah. It's, it's unity. So I felt it already. And Dean and Dave also felt it. You understand? They felt, yes. hey, there's something changed. So, and that's that 2%. You know, you know that 2% space, what already you gave away. So um, Ray and Aileen wanted to sign too quick, I think. Um, and then we took every, too much average players. If they were Dutch players, or it was players from England. Later, Ray tried to restore that. Isaac McLeod, Sheehan, John Stead. Okay, that's quality. Although, they proved something. You know what I mean? So, in and, and, and that segment, you have to scout. For example, to go, go back again to League One. So, and now we make, can make a conclusion that uh, we, we took too much players, too much average players, too quick, and you must have the patience only to scout the exception. Because in, in Christ's philosophy, um, you play attractive football, it's one. You do it with um, homegrown players, 50%. Yeah? For example, we took Da Silva, Greenberg, Adam Campbell, uh, Elliot Hewitt later, you remember? Um, um, Curtis Thompson. Hayden Hollis. So it must be a British spine. I love that. Yeah. And the transfers you take from abroad, for example, must be an abora or an exception. And then you come to, to results, and then you have attractive football with results. But because we were not exceptional up front and in the back, there always are the saviors. Eh? Saviors are in the backs. John Terry, and the saviors are up front. Van Nistelrooy, uh, Ryan Giggs. So there are the winners. Because the rest, it's alibi. Also are, and I'm critical to myself, also our ball possession against Plymouth, 81%. You remember the game? Ruben Reed, yeah. 81% ball possession. Ian Holloway in the studio, it was on Sky, you remember? Yes, I remember. But 
but that uh, 20 percent ball position and Ruben Reed scores the one nil. Ruben Reed, yeah. And that's the learning because you always have to scout to develop the winners up front and the winners in the back. And, and train that, eh? Will Curver, uh, Kimmy Cyril, train that qualities. And I could have done that, but to make a long story short, when I talk too much, you must tell me. Eh? No, no, we listen. We like listening. This, this is no offense against nobody. But I always said the truth. And I gave away too much percentage, 2% sharpness, when we took too much average players. Later, I made the confrontation. Remember, I made an interview. Later, when uh, with that striker, uh, striker uh, uh, you know, before Aston Villa, and then Isaac McLeod came, so I was already irritated. But in fact, it's also my own mistake. You must be very sharp without compromise from the beginning. And um, yeah, I think in that summer it went wrong. Yeah, that you couldn't you couldn't finish your eighty percent ball possession. And that has to do with quality, not with the style we played, because you know what we try to. In the Jimmy Cyril philosophy, we try to play attractive for the fans, offensive football, create a lot of chances. But for example, now we talk with you, everything goes back. I keep them at home, you remember? Yes. Then, when Noble took the red card. He took a few red cards down the years, Noble. Okay. I was always, I love hate, I have a love hate with Noble because he could have reached Higher, you understand? But they, again, he took a red card. And we, we could have scored eight goals, I believe. So, and that's what I mean. Scout the right types. Uh, develop them by the youth, only the exception. And then um, Notch County can make a step. Yeah. 100%. I've always taught and grown up in my many years at Leicester that managers are ultimately defined by the players that they bring in not necessarily the ones that they inherit. And I think as we've spoken it, that's why I thought Portsmouth was such a seminal moment for your career at Portsmouth. At Gillingham was such a seminal moment. Yeah. Because you do the inverted commas immediate job that the owner tasks you with, keep us up. Because in England with the promotion relegation systems, we are obsessed with that. We are obsessed with that. Yeah. You deliver that you can then very legitimately say, right, I've done that. I'm in charge. I don't want him. I want him. I want those two players. Therefore, I will have them. But upon relegation, there are then other people that can just chip away at you and compromise you. And then it becomes a, a very, it becomes a big judgment call for a manager, doesn't it? As to how far he's then prepared to push back because he's not in quite the strong position he would have been if you'd stayed up. Yeah, but even then, because we always learn and, and look in the mirror, you, had, you, yeah, you didn't have to give that 2% away. Yeah. And I've tried, eh? I've tried. Yeah. But there was always discussion, uh, you know, a striker, uh, Frank de Moes, for example, he was a he was blonde striker. He was a holding man who, could, who had the experience, for example. And there were, there were a few, few things where you were hold back. And um, of course, you must always look in the mirror. Then I had to be harder in that situation. But you are right, when you kept Notts County up, the situation is more natural that you are leading without compromise, of course. But um, look, I, I'm not a, a depressed man. <laughs> I'm still sick of that. I'm still sick of that. But as professional, you must learn and the club must learn. I believe in that. It's very good because the whole idea of these podcasts is that I am just, I'm completely unimportant. I'm just a conduit, a middleman between players, managers and the fans. And so that they can see a side and delve under the surface with an interview that they would not ordinarily be able to see. You are much, much more forthright when you were in employment than most people but a lot of the time supporters can only see a very small percentage of the real person, the real character, because players must talk in sound bites. You know, they, they must respect the club and all the rest. So the idea behind these is, 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 is to talk. And that's why it's so interesting to talk to you and, and, and for fans to be able to appreciate what actually went on. Now, 
I remember we all went down Stevenage, first game of the season. I, I would say 99.9% .9 of all the fan base think, right, we're bouncing straight back. Great performance, great result. I remember. Zero two, eh? Yeah. Total football. Allemaal voor left back scores the tunnel. That's it. Up front of the uh, of the stand. That's the one. Stand. And uh, an eight second goal. Eh? We, 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 we Noble took the ball. Stead was sent away. Second post, Curtis Thompson. Game after, we went to Huddersfield Town, I believe. We won yeah. also zero two. Noble uh, with that fantastic uh, chip. And then, and that's also the total football. It's the mentality yep. of Gary Jones. Then we let ourselves provocate against Mansfield at home. And then Mansfield, and it went from here in the eyes of the fans. To yes, them. yes, yes. No. And that was, um, we lost Kyle Silva that game. I, I remember he was injured. And that was uh, 10,000 people, I believe. Yes, it was. Full stadium. And also mentality is, uh, and, uh, and gangsters you, you need in football. So. My interpretation of total football was always one-sided. They thought I only want always want to attack. No, you need winners. And in that way, we were too polite. We had two nice boys, I think. The club, also the first year, we didn't have... You talked about Ferguson, eh? eh? Yeah. Types like Fidic and uh, Ferdinand and Roy Keane. Yeah, and up front van Nistelrooy. And Ruud told me later when I worked in Hamburg, Van Nistro said Ferguson only scouted that kind of types. Training was not special. But he scouted the winners and the personality. And then I, I compared it with um, Spurs, for example. I was assistant of Martin Joel. And we were always fifth. And yeah. then he, def he, he, he made the definition what was the difference between Man United and Spurs. We had more phlegmatic players. You know what I mean? More phlegmatic players than the, the Roy Keens and the Von Nistelrooy's and the Fidic. That was very interesting. So when, when Spurs, for example, now, they still didn't reach that status of Liverpool, of Chelsea, of Man United. But did it, they, did, they didn't make a definition. Where is the, the small gap that they, always, they are always number one and we are always fourth? Maybe they don't, are not aware of that. And then you get a fallen top club, like Hamburg, second Bundesliga now. So you must have the braveness to, to look in the mirror. What do, what do we do wrong? What are we doing wrong? No, we, we didn't select the, the winners at Spurs. More phlegmatic players, nice players. And I, I enjoyed them, Berbatov, Keen, uh, uh, Tom Huddleston, uh, Michael Kerrick, uh, Aaron Lennon. But the extremeness in Spurs, of uh, in Man United, was more to win. And so you, 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 you're always improving, you understand? But you must be honest to look in the mirror. Where can we make an, an improvement, innovation? Johan Cruyff would say. We always have to change, Cruyff said, every day. And he blamed Holland, we stopped to do that after 74. So we had one light in uh, 88 with Van Basten Gullit. Do you remember? Yeah. Later yeah. generation, Rob and Van Persie. And now we are like the rest. So you always must innovate your philosophy. It's so, interesting. So would you say you didn't have enough winners in your team at Notts County in that season? Yeah, of course. And I'm, I'm, I'm the first one who is responsible. Look, the savers are in the back to concede zero goals, what Jimmy Cyril said. I studied him. Started yeah, with you didn't score. <laughs> yeah. You didn't lose. Don't concede. But you need also that exceptional quality up front. Uh, Van Nistelrooy, one chance in the box, top corner, without doubt. Now, and that's the kind of thing. And I'm responsible eh, for that. Always. I'm, I'm, I stand before the group. But that's winning. Winners are in the back, winners up front. We didn't have enough. Let's talk about one player who I think... Um, well, Attracted. Sorry. Sorry. Let's talk about one of your signings. And, and, and he, he certainly sparked a huge amount of debate. And, and, and after you've moved on, got involved, 
in a very, very high profile um, disagreement with, with your successor. Um, talk to me about Stanley Abora. Now, Stanley Abora was 70 years, made his debut on the Ronald Koeman in Ajax, Champions League. And everybody could, and that's why I love the English eye and the English heart. They recognize talent. And Stanley was recognized by our fans. Everybody could see him. And Stanley had a very unstable uh, yeah, follow-up from his 17 years debut, because normally he must be in 20 years the best of Ajax. So he was very unstable now. He, he could not never get a connection with a coach who brought him there. And there was Notts County. He was already 28, 29, but he found that environment. Yeah? Yeah. So um, he was our number six before the defense. I played with two tens. Yeah. First year we played with Jimmy Spencer, number 10, and Balen Bainer, number nine. Jamal Campbell Rice was injured. Thompson on the right, Burke on the left. You remember? Yeah. We played with, uh, number 10 in the hole. And the second year, because I wanted to build in more defensive consistency, I put the number 10 before the defense. That was Stanley Abora. Yeah. Now, he secured a lot of ball possession, as you know. He eh? kept the ball. He was always good in his passing. But he forgot one thing. To organize a defense organization. So when we don't have the ball. You understand? Yeah. Stanley could bring, could bring that up. And there was no better player than Stanley. Eh? The Makalele role. You yeah. organize. Defense organization, nobody let his men run, we keep in shape, everybody is, is going up, going down, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, shouting at people when they let the men run. So, and, and that's no criticism. When he could bring up that development, and I couldn't make that longer, but I was busy with that. And he scored seven, eight goals because he never came in the box. Uh, you know, he yeah. was much static. Then Stanley could have made a transfer because clubs followed him. I know that. A lot of players from us they followed Graham Burke. Uh, I know. So, yes. and Stanley was too late confronted. What, what can you reach? You understand? So, I'm a coach like Bill Curve. I always want to develop the players to a level what is 30% higher than they, they, they think. Yeah, you understand? So, and, and that was a pity that Stanley, I couldn't uh, guide Stanley further because later he left to Portsmouth That's on the bench, Ireland, not stable. And that is also tragic for Stanley that, that I left. Yeah. So he, he had his specific quality before the defense, never lost the ball, always had the right solution, calmed the, the game down or he, he accelerated the game, as you know. Good style, good for the fans. But some, something was missing. So, and that was for Burke, that was for, for Noble, you know what I mean? That was for Campbell. And that hurt me the most as football lover, that I couldn't uh, refine that process, you know, fulfill that process. No. One of the great occasions do of I, that do season. I, do, I, do, I talk too, do I talk too much? No, 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 no. This right. is all very interesting. Very interesting. Um, a great night in the cup. Aston Villa. Yeah. Went very close to getting through there. Yeah. How did you yeah, enjoy that, that night? No, I never forget the fence. They were there in the corner where Burke scores the 1-2 the, the in the top yeah. corner. I think that's, I think Jimmy Sherrill would be proud of us. Mm -hmm. I think that's the style of what Notts County, and we all as a family at Notts County, were representing. Yeah. Not head down, don't stand behind the tree. This is Notts County. We decide what happened. Eh? Sherwood with his at that moment I was an enemy with his arrogant face <laughs> this is Tim finish. Sherwood yes you didn't get on with him finish. did you I respect him a lot but at that moment finish now so we, we started Snyder's in the top corner remember with an unbelievable um, Grealish I, I never saw him but I heard of him he played in Notts County yes he Modern. did he played against Abora on the right side he had a player from Barca Traorra or something Traore. like that Traore yeah so, uh, Jill Schwetz was playing, no, uh, Amavor was playing on him. No, Manuel Amavor, yeah. He was uh, turning around. <laughs> I changed Schwetz <laughs> on the left. Fantastic game. Look, and that's England. That environment, that, you know, that atmosphere, that was uh, unbelievable. But on the end, and I'm still sick of that, we were out. We make a one-two 
with John Stead, eh, the penalty. Yeah. Uh, Eyes on McLeod was hooked by the goalie. Uh, um, Burke in the in second, second. And then we forget, and that I learned, you must never walk back. We forgot to make the 3-1. Yeah. In Gillingham, we forgot to make the 0-2. So when a club is having two thoughts, must we go forward or go back? When you go in England back, you will, um, you will be punished. Wimbledon away, Makafinha, mm. big strike. I can fend with, I can fend with. Uh, yeah, the, the, it's like a bodybuilder. <laughs> against, against Sprockel and Schwartz, I never, I never forget it. Now everything comes back. So you always, always have to play brave because the goals are your escape. And then Abora hooked the player in the, in the box and they draw from a penalty. But we were, we were almost there. But that's the Notts County where we were all proud of. That's the style. We decide what happened. And we build up from the back. Roy Carroll, we build out over Sporkel. Uh, Elliot Hewitt played. Abora Burke. We were very offensive that evening. I think too offensive. But um, I was very proud on us. But it was uh, not okay that we were out. Because that was the chance. Yeah. Remarkable moment. I mean, there were, there, were, there, were, there were many great... I mean, they, they were never dull games. And, and at home, you played extremely well and got some good results after the stevenage opening day it was difficult away from home wasn't it it was difficult yeah. to get that right formula and balance for you yeah also look everything we talk about it's always my mistake always i always take the responsibility of everything so also the away instability we had is my mistake we were not so brave as at home at home we had, you know, we didn't stand behind the tree. We decided. We created a lot of scoring chances. But away, maybe, because we had a number six before the defense, you can play him in the back. You understand? That you, yeah. you play 5-2-3 or 3-4-3. Three, three. Yeah. For example, that's the learning process, what you do later. Because England is always difficult. Eh? Wimbledon, one all up. Last minute. Yeah. Go in. Game over. That's why I say you can't have enough extreme scoring qualities up front to finish the game off. Zero two is game over. But also in the tactical shape of the team, you could have done maybe concessions that you play with an extra sweeper in a five-two-three or a five-three-two formation, and maybe then we had more points. But okay, that's afterwards. Um, that's afterwards. But you're right. At home, we had an okay style. I think uh, a lot of fans say that. But the, the fans who didn't like me or who were critical against me for the instability are also right. And there, on that fence, I'm proud. I'm critical because that means Notts County is a winning club. You understand? We don't. I'm still a part of Notts County. If you want it or not. You win a team. Your favorite team, Jimmy Cyril. You don't stand behind the tree. We decide what happens. Yeah. Ah, and and 50% the second seed. We showed that. But even Eckrington, where we create so much scoring chances. You remember the game? Yes, I did. Yeah, then you must finish them off with 4 5 one. And in that way, I mean winners. You can't be extreme enough to be brave like Johan Cruyff. You know what I mean? That you decide. That kind of personalities. Who go right when everybody goes left? Football needs. You don't need ideal son and loss. You need exceptions. Also, who say things very direct. And in that way, we had also like a little bit silent team. Roy Carroll, of course, he was uh, uh, with trees uh, smashing, uh, like his boss Ferguson. Also, Cyril could do that, what I read from Cyril. That's also necessary. And Alan could do that, and, 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 and John Stead, of course, could do that. But... Sometimes I had the feeling we had still 1% over, especially against the ball, in the pressing, in the recovery qualities, you know what I mean? And when I could do it with, with the knowledge I have now, again, with that unbelievable, difficult league too, because mm. it's not easy, <laughs> it's not easy, then I would have that uh, concession in away games, maybe. So... 
the manager is always responsible. And um, in other clubs, people could have that time. Eh? I see from Broncos and Feyenoord, sometimes he lost six games from Broncos, you know, Giovanni. Yeah, Giovanni Broncos. Yeah. And, and nothing happens, you know. And so always you need the luck that the board stays to say, but what I told you before, because Ray and Aileen left, uh, met Alexander left, the guy Branson came, uh, with all the respect for people, Julian Winter came, totally opposite in my philosophy, totally opposite, you understand? And the, then a kind of chemic and, and credits you have inside um, with, the, with the bad result you, you will lose. And then it's a matter of time of being checked. And unfortunately it happened. Influence of social media, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes. Fans who are, are very quick, uh, on, it's their right. Eh? And in that way, you can't do concessions on transfers. On yeah. having not so much players, 37. Yeah. Because you, you create uh, unsatisfied uh, players. You know what I mean? Be, 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 be tighter. I think Brian Clough, when he won the Europa Cup with uh, 18 players, <laughs> but all personalities and specific qualities. And that's a lot of times what, um, for example, Red Bull. Eh? Red Bull, it's a drink. Yeah. I, came there, I came there in 2010. And Salzburg and Leipzig are now on the top. Yeah. Creating millions from nothing with one philosophy. Not my philosophy, only pressing, gegen pressing, you know, defend forward, sprint mm. capacities, quick players. Because I'm more Cruyff, Curver, mind, Dutch minded. But you have to press when you lose the ball. There they say you give the ball to the opponent, two against one, eight seconds goal. More. But it's not the truth, it's a truth, it's a face where they are successful with. So Red Bull has a face. Atletico Madrid has a face. Mm. Barcelona, Ajax has a face. But when Arsenal lost the face, they also average. So I always say the, the, the DNA, Jimmy Michel, the protocol of a club and the unity on the background with uh, the, cleaning, the cleaning lady, the youth coaches, mm. Is the basic of the club also for Notch County to come back on the highest level? I believe in that. But you must have a face. And after I said there was changes in, in, eh, up in, in the boardroom and we fall apart inside. I felt that. And, and that's, I hope, for Notch County because I'm still a big fan of, of Notch County. That the unity will be restored and every negative influence will be killed. Uh, that's very tough when I say it, but a big club as Notts County deserves that. No. Very good. Um, can, you still, can you still see so, me? Because in Holland, it's one hour later. Yes. Can you still see me? I, we can still see you. Must I turn more light? No, you're, you're lighting this podcast up, Ricardo. Okay. Don't worry. You're very good. Okay. Um, okay. I hesitate to bring it up, but, but I guess this was equally... A, a difficult moment. It wasn't helped that it was on national BBC television. Um, how Salford. difficult was the Salford game for you? Look, even in Holland they saw it. It was live on BBC. There was a week before the whole, every day on, on uh, yeah. the, the Manchester boys, you know, Nicky Butt and uh, Gary Robert. Neville, Ryan so, Giggs. Yeah. Okay. So the whole country was against us. Yes. So that were. was the moment for us. Because it was already critical and there were already changes inside. And I also felt this is the moment that we, you know. And that game was uh, made the process quicker. I think that game was uh, a catastrophe, also for me. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Hard night for you, hard night for the players, because it was just magnified so much, wasn't it, with this new non-league club and Notts County, the world's oldest professional football club, all of that. Yeah. Um, that must have been, as I say, that must have been very, 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 very difficult for you. Yeah, you also, like Gillingham, you, you'll never forget that. Yeah. But uh, of, you saw it, that pitch was, uh, you know, it was so deep. They, they, maybe they watered it. You, know, you knew they would do everything. Even the country was 
against us. They would do everything to win this game. So we, we knew that, uh, we instructed them, me and my staff, this is the moment we can't lose, we have to kill them, we have to win. And then, uh, yeah, it happened what you say, it was live on television. And I think also that was a big influence uh, what happened later, later to me. Because a, a morning after there was a uh, meeting from the board and, uh, you know, uh, then pe people are very emotional with right. But even then, even then you have to support your coach. Even then you have to stay behind each other because your friends you know in bad times. You know what I mean? So I took a, in this meeting I have now with you, I took a lot of responsibility to me. Yeah? Yes, definitely. I, You're very honest. But you have to support people in good and bad times, especially in bad times. And uh, they didn't do that. It's interesting. And, and one of the reasons why we find ourselves talking was because um, one of our previous guests was Mike Edwards. Uh, and Mike is one of the longest serving servants the club has had for many years, 14, 15 years. And, you know, and he made the point about managers. He's played under something like 24 managers in 14 years at Notts County. Um, why, and, um, yeah. why, did, why did you change so much? Well, this was the question I was okay. going to ask you. The, the reason okay. it's changed is because we live in an instant society. It's an instant world. With our promotion and relegation, everybody wants success yesterday. And if you're not, you are seldom judged to be middle of the road. You are either judged to be a success or you are judged to be a failure. You, are so, you can seldom go along in that middle lane of a motorway. Steady. Very few. You're either great, heroes and zeros. And Notts County have certainly fallen into that trap of if results aren't going well, change the manager. Change the manager again. You know, there are three or four seasons when we've had three managers in a single season. But, but, now, but now they must say, OK, what's our foundation? Who are responsible? For that? We talk about Jimmy Cyril, for example. But Jimmy Cyril is not only the club. There are more people, 100%. It's not only Jimmy Cyril or Johan Cruyff. But they, there are kind of elements where they put the DNA under the skin. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of clubs don't have the braveness to follow that line and give the coach more time. Like Ferguson, he was almost sacked. I remember in 1986, game yes or no, and he stayed long. Uh, Wenger stayed long. Cruyff stayed eight years. You know what I mean? And that are always the clubs with that consistent backup. On the end, who create the success? Yeah, I, I, I think. I, I you, yeah, I agree. The, I, I the philosophy you must describe. Well, the short answer is the club has not had a consistent philosophy for a long time. Any successful philosophy with Notts County has by and large come from the manager who has done extremely well. So Neil Warnock had a very, Neil Warnock, who's had record number of promotions in English football. Notts County was his first professional club and he took them from the third tier to the top tier. And he built and molded a group of players and a system in his own image it wasn't the club prescribing a philosophy it was the manager setting down his own template and then when that manager left another manager came in with a different template and and, and if you look at um the templates that were ad were adopted either side of your appointment the club had gone back to one of its own with sean derry before you first managerial position they changed him for you to go down the philosophy that you sold. And then when you left, you were replaced with Jamie Fullerton, which if I'm honest, I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone because I've never managed a professional football club in my life. But I think 99.99% of all people in football, let alone Notts County, would be going, I don't really get that. I don't really get that. So I think clubs seldom have philosophies. 
you know, one thing we've not touched on, and I would, I would appreciate your input, is that we talk a lot about growing young players. We have academies, clubs spend fortunes on them. And hardly any players come through. Yeah, but on that way, we were on a good way, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But, but in m many of your other managers, either side of you, hardly put a young, a young player in the team. Yeah, but, but, but they will sign transient professionals at 31 on a one-year contract, yeah? On a lot more money than an 18-year-old that you've invested five years in bringing through a youth system. They may or not be brilliant, but surely they're a better bet than a transient 31-year-old. Do you want to hear my opinion from that? Yes. Look, when I, st when I was at Spurs, for example, I knew that 90% of the English talents was dropping off. When they were 21 years, they were gone. So you can imagine you, you're six years, you come in the dome at Spurs, Spurs Lodge, and 12 years later, you're 18 years, you must find a normal job. That's wrong. So the first example was Harry Kane, who came through, and Danny Rose, you remember? That were, were the first, Ryan Mason. But before that, there was no tradition of creating own British homegrown talents on 17, 18 years to be Rooney or Messi, very mature. That's your goal. Yeah. And also I did my batch, my pro license I did in the UK. So I know that statistic is horrible. Mm. And that made me an extra motiv mo motivated person to come to England to make that better, especially with... You know, there's the skills training I do, always have an eye for the Burks, for the Campbells, for yeah. the Kurt Thompson, uh, that homegrown philosopher also from Kaif, 50% eh, from Barcelona, have to exist out of Catalonia, have to. Yes. 50%. And the exception they buy is Stoiko, is Romario, is Laudrup, is Neymar, the exception. And so it should be. And there already I failed in that summer because we took, I, I spoke about it, we yeah. took too much average. But on the other hand, we had Burke, who was coming, uh, Noble had his, assist, uh, his, his statistics, uh, Curtis Thompson, yeah, a little bit injured when I came, Adam Campbell, El El Elliot Hewitt, so uh, Atkinson came, yeah. so Carl de Silva. So in that way, we could prove the opposite. Um, I, will, I had an open house to the youth. I had a good relationship with Emmy, for example. And sometimes uh, you yeah. have people who are open for you or people who are very reservated and then they don't like. But in fact, the youth coaches are the most important coaches from the club because they must produce two exceptions a year, two Burke camps and uh, uh, Henri of Van Persie. When you do that, you, you bring millions, Frankie de Jong and Ajax. And Ajax managed that because Ajax didn't step away from Jimmy Cyril, Johan Cruyff. Ajax didn't step away from the influence that, for example, Jimmy Schiller gave. Eh? Attractive football, initiative, offensive football, of course with a clean sheet, with skills, with repetitions, because I see videos of him, 65 years, he's jogging in the park, he's doing the skills with the little guys. So I also wanted to have a red line with the youth coaches. In Spurs, I went to the communities, 11 poor neighborhoods where I trained the coaches. I, I went with Edgar Davids in poor neighborhoods and the, ki the kids were sleeping with the ball and they changed more character, more self-discipline. You know, both feet uh, right, left against the wall every day, one against one, oversteps, scissors, no tasks, you know, three against three. You organize yourself. No coach, you say you must do this, you must do this. Exceptions. But even in Spurs, um, a lot of academy members coaches, they thought they were important. They, they left that innocence. But I, I think you must not give too many tasks to kids to dribble, to beat two, two, three people like George Best. You know, because the street football disappeared, we have less exceptions. And now I come back on the team um, in that six games. We had not enough people who could be the men. Like McCord or Jamal Campbell Rice. Yes. So and now I come to the pure basic Cruyff curve. That's 100% the creativity of the game. What Chris Waddle did, what George Best did, Glenn Hoddle. The exceptional creative players, which you can scout. And in Jimmy Rissell's mind, you can create them. You know what I mean? So you, 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 and, and, and 
we talk now a lot about philosophy, but it's also maybe that somebody thinks, hey, that's interesting. Why we don't try that 10 years? That a kid from six years, he dribbles and dribbles and dribbles and dribbles. You know what I mean? And they take initiative and the right back comes and the center. The, and it's chaos, but they all develop the individual freedom uh, skills. You understand? And now the football is too static. Everywhere you see ball possession. You don't play somebody out. It's more ball circulation. You know what I mean? Yeah, square, so, square, drop, square, square, square. And, and the, 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 the production line, and maybe I talk too much, but no. the production line, again, are the youth coaches. Is the connection what I had in Spurs with the, with the communities, with the street, where in Holland there is so much violence. But the ball will change your character. The ball will give you hope. The father figure is the coach, not the father at home or the teacher at school. But they all want to be a good footballer. Every kid. But they must have a program. To master the ball, what Jimmy Sill said. You know, to dominate the one against one. To not always do what the coach says. You know, do what your intuition says. Like Gerard or Lampard. Because Lampard was sent away at West Ham United. What he did with his father, spikes on, sprint. Eh? George Best made the dribble. Edgar Davids did, did the gym. And they all became exceptions with no talent, but with working talent. You understand? Now, and also, now like we come to the, to the, to the, to the base, of, to the, to the hotspot. There was also my strength to make, to make um, players more skillful, to make mm. players output better. You know what I mean? That, that mm. Noble as midfielder scores 20 goals, like Gerard or Lampard, and now he scores only five. And yeah, maybe I talk too much, but that hurts still that you couldn't make that process two, three years to make players better. I mean, as you, I identify, talk too much. Yeah. I talk as you identified there, Jimmy, under Jimmy Searle, um, Knots were always had a production line of young yeah. players yeah. that would come into the first team that had been with yeah. the club since they were 14 or 15. And um, his um, his main youth team coach, you said to me how the youth team coach, most important coach at the club, was a guy called Mick Walker. Mick was with Knotts for something like 15 to 20 years. And he developed a conveyor belt of real talent. Real talent that went on to play in the Premier League, Tommy Johnson, Mark Draper, Dean Yates. Um, and talent that was good enough to play for Knotts County in whatever division they were currently playing for. While Jimmy was around, there was always a route for those players to be given a chance to play. I would suggest that in recent years, um, the amount of young players that have come from 14, 15, 16 to play into Notts County's first team has probably reduced 70 to 80 percent. They're a rarity rather than norm. But, but, We've still signed 15 to 20 players a season. Now, one club, uh, it was Colchester, I know, had a deliberate policy with the manager. So this was kind of a prerequisite. You talk about philosophy, and I'll be interested to see what you think of this. So Colchester kind of had a template and a philosophy that said, we are going to have three, four, five homegrown players from our academy in the 17 every week now as a manager you're coming in new mr manager are you comfortable with that or not because that is our philosophy now question to you do you think that is good or do you think that inverted commas takes some of the authority away from the manager that's how it should be and in fact when we, we had Hewitt, campbell burke the silva thompson we already started with that process. You remember? Yeah. So, that, so you're that, saying if so if so you're coming for an interview that, that if that, that if a board says the philosophy is we are we are going to guarantee a certain number of young players coming into this team, we need you to buy into that, you would not have a problem with that. Or do you, do you think that's fair that's, or not fair? But that's also what, what, what I proved. 
Yeah. Because I wasn't afraid to, uh, to uh, put the young guys in. Yeah. Of course, they were not ready for it results-wise. I think Gary Thompson could have produced, produced more than Adam Campbell, yeah. to be honest. But Adam, we needed because we had no pace. In, in, in the, the, the year I came, only Jamal Campbell Rice, we had no speed up front. So Adam had specific qualities. And we've tried to develop homegrown talents. Curtis Thompson, eh, who scored yeah. the goal on Steve Stevenage. He was, he was built a career for himself at Wickham in, a divi in two, three divisions higher than Notts County. Okay, but okay, but Curtis was, was an Edgar Davis, I called him. He also had specific <laughs> qualities. But that's the truth. So you should build what Ajax did with Clivert, Bergkamp, Cruyff, uh, Schredorf, Rijkaard, all that exceptions, Van der Vaart, Snyder. And now they also went down. So now also they buy foreigners. And I was also a foreigner in England, but I, I know exactly what I talk about. You must keep a British spine, Martin, you always said. That's very important. The time, in that time when I was there, we had no any production of the, of the, of the youth. Later they had, and they become the uh, best academy of the country, you know, that was all okay. But even then, it's not enough. Because when I see Red Bull Leipzig against Tottenham, eh, on a fantastic white outline, 80,000 people, but Red Bull Leipzig decides. They decided. And, and Spurs was only reacting. So you have nothing to lose to create exceptional players with pace, with skill, with flair, you know, with hunger, with, with speed, you know, with tricks, with flicks like Cristiano, in fact. It's only mental. But nobody trains to sprint. Do you see a kid train the sprint two hours a day for himself? Eh? But Cristiano makes it. So in that way, I mean, I was, then I'm, now I'm tough, now I'm the manager. We were too lazy in England. And I'm part of that. I wanted to train more. You know, do what Cristiano do. Do what Edgar Davids did. Eh? After, uh, after the training, one against one with me. One against three. Then his sprint coach came. Then he was in the gym. Then he took his own physio. And that's why he was Edgar Davids. But the talents in Ajax when he was 17 were much more. But they didn't choose that path. And also in that way, England became spoiled, I think. The young players were also a little bit too much leaning on their talent. You know what I mean? Eh? When, when Noble and Burke, I admire them, but they have to give that creative um, production every game. They must be consistent in that. And then I'm the, I'm the main coach. I, I'm, a, I'm a helper, you know, that I'm a romantic. I, I help you, but you also have to produce. And in that's why we had, we had a perfect mix with, with Smith, with Carol, with Edwards, with Sheehan, to raise them in the beginning with, with Jones. So in that way, Notts County had so much what they didn't see, what we don't appreciate. You understand? We look outside, but maybe we had it in our own house. And of course, I never, I, I must not relegate. But we had so good mix, what you say, on pure lovers of the game, in the coaching staff, and new talent. And, and Guy Branson was okay with that to find ourselves off Leicester Villa, to take um, Campbell from Everton. And he, he knew where they were. Um, he was not shy enough to, to know his place. We, we spoke about that because you must say the truth. But in that way, he was okay. And when you identify that young top talents who do, didn't make the step by Spurs or Arsenal or whatever, you must take them and give them a, a warm environment. But then they must train the skills. They must make 400 actions a day. What Jimmy Searle did, what Will Curver did. But how many actions somebody make in, in eight against eight? How many, how many times you shoot on goal in eight against eight? Two times. But a striker has to finish 400 times a day. Two against two is 400% more than eight against eight. And we all do eight against eight. We all stop to dribble when we are older. But why? In, the, in, in England, everything is compact. It's, there's, there's no space. So you must, and that was Jimmy Cyril's massive attraction to me. He was still training the individual qualities from every position. And not only the striker, because Mike Edwards, you know why he was important for me? He scored. <laughs> he always scored. So you need, to, you need the production from every position. And that's the future. And when I and Robin in Holland, I and Robin, when you take him out of the game, we are harmless. But you must have it 
from 11 positions. And that's what Cyril meant. Cyril was his time up front. Because he thought when the, the threatened is from every position to, to score a goal, we are not to defend. We are not to defend. And that Notts County have to write down in a book for every youth coach. Hey, Rob Milsom can't only fulfill his task with being a good playmaker. He must score 20 goals like Gerard Lampard. And, and ask that for him, come over the top. Noble eh, against Doncaster. 2-1, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Get him in the box. Fantastic. So the football becomes more dynamic, international. Eh? And Davy Klaas comes to Everton from Ajax, the captain. Yeah. And he's sitting yeah. in the stand. He's sitting in the stand. That means that Holland is not coming in, 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 the, in the border from the international uh, laws of physical capacity. You know what I mean? And it always, you, you, every day you have to change. So the philosophy we, sp we speak about is a movable thing. You always have to improve. And a lot of people are conservative. They, they still train like 30 years ago. You can't. I talk too much, eh? Hey, no, you don't. I'll tell you a little story. The, the, Dean Yates may have told you this uh, about a guy called Tommy Johnson. Yeah. Tommy um, went on to be a household name in the Premier League with Aston Villa, with Derby County, with Celtic. Uh, was sold by Knotts for ooh, two or three million pounds. And he came from the northeast of England, uh, Newcastle. We call him a Geordie. And at 11 years old, he came down to Notts County. His dad was a mad keen Newcastle United fan, wanted him to play for his hometown club. Tommy came down to Nottingham for a trial. It's 250 miles away. He signed for Notts County. Do you know why? And his dad wanted him to sign for Newcastle, his hometown club. He signed for Notts County because he came down on a Sunday afternoon and Jimmy Cyril, the first team manager, was taking the training session. And Tommy said, I couldn't believe it. I'm a little 11 year old kid. The day after a first division game, the manager I see on the telly is taking this coaching session for the under 11s. He said that would never have happened at Newcastle. He signed for Notts County. Not okay. Newcastle. But now that's a kind of DNA. What makes Notts County different than others. True? Yeah, absolutely. So you cannot uh, take a manager who don't have that. And they did. That's what I mean. Jimmy Cyril put the rule. Also the first team, uh, the coach must go down to 11. Because then the best talents of England will choose for Notts County. Because in other clubs, the manager won't do that. Exactly. So you cannot leave the path what big legends did in the past to make the club different and better than others. And I, I can't understand that people don't see that. Another example. Eh? Um, I was assisted with, with Martin in Tottenham and also I went to Hamburg. Yeah. Hamburg SV, you know, Kevin Keegan, Robert. Abs Hamburg SV, yeah, absolutely. So it's also a fallen top club. And then we were, in the two years I, I was there, we were two years half final UEFA Cup. And that time it was not Europa League, UEFA Cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what was the secret? And one hour before the training, everybody was in the gym. Everybody in the gym. Working. On the bikes, on the power plate, uh, squats. One One hour after the training, still one hour, Ivica, Olic, you know, all that kind of uh, Van Nistelrooy. We were on the, on the pitch, still crosses, heading, free kicks, you know what I mean? So it was a working talent environment that made us do double than the rest. So we trained double than the conquerors, you know what I mean? But the people didn't recognize that. So after that two years, they took other coaches. Uh, they represent themselves, good PowerPoint, you know, uh, Dolce Cabana, I, I, don't, I don't care, I don't know. You know, a kind of exposure. But the truth was the simpleness from that one hour before the training. We were like crazy uh, in the gym. 
And one hour after the training, everybody was making his programs, his individual program, defensive headers, uh, slidings, uh, hill sprints, and 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 an Ivica Olic. You remember that guy from Croatia? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I had to give him 200 crosses a day <laughs> heading. Because in the eight against eight, you had two times. But when you have eight hours a day, you cannot have one training a day. And one o'clock, you go to your wife. You go shopping to Ikea, I always say. With the joke, go shopping to Ikea. No, it's, it's an eight hours a day job, I think. You understand? So I gave him in the afternoon 200 crosses. High, low, high balls, hard balls, first post. And at the end of the year, he was 29. He went to buy him from Galkeng. Olic. Yeah. And that was, look, I learn from players. I'm not important. I only try to have a good eye, real curve, Jimmy Sirion curve, physical elements, Red Bull pressing. You know what I mean? That you take the best methods from everything and put that together. And then you have no ego. And I was shocked that Olic uh, was at Bayern Munich on the end of uh, that year. He was 29. The same with Harry Kane. Harry Kane had to leave the academy when he was 15. He was not good enough. And Chris Ramsey told me also that story, you know, uh, the former Queen's Park Rangers manager. Yes. And we, worked, and we worked extra and we worked extra with him. And now he's Harry Kane, the striker. So a, a lot of success stories are always based falling deep. But then you must do, do double than the conquerors to come back. And that's interesting. And that's the story of Red Bull. You know, with not top qualities, they're always in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Europa now because everybody knows yeah. them. But I know that England has much more tradition. You understand? England has much more stylists in potential. Much more love for the game. You spoke about Smith, Jones, Edwards, Spencer. Uh, you know, they, they have specific style. And there they only sprint and they press and they, you know, robots. And in and, and that way, it's a pity for England. And now I come back that so much talent, 90%, is not taking the best out of it. You know what I mean? So in that, in that, in that way, you take a good initiative uh, without ego. How can you improve the production of your academy? That you have 50% exceptions on the end when they are 18 years. Who has that? Chelsea? Arsenal? Spurs? No. Absolutely not. There's no patience. And there's a, a lot of space to win, I think, for a tradition country like England. But then I say England don't train enough. We don't do enough. Especially also what you say between the under 18 and the first team. Between the reserves and the first team. There's a lot of talent was... What, what, is, what is wasted? You know what I mean? And then I think that not, when Notts County can, can be there an exception in, the warmth and, the, and the, 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 the knowledge, you know, the performance culture, the specific qualities, the skills, they can attract the, the best talents because you are depending on, on scouting and on your squad. In, in Red Bull, they said there are four success criteria. Quality of the squad is for your team. Quality of the trainers team, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the scouting and the philosophy. That are the four success, success criteria. I'm conscious of your time. One, one subject I would just value your input in. That's recruitment. So if we go back to the Jimmy Cyril era, Jimmy Cyril would personally scout every player. He would never sign a player without seeing him at least twice. That's a long time ago. Understand that. And he had people in his scouting system that he trusted implicitly. People who he'd known for 30, 40 years. Fast forward to the modern era. Clearly now, uh, the world is a much smaller place. Technology has advanced immeasurably. So Scout 7, all these kind of specialist video services, video, etc., etc. What's your take on, 
on, re on, on, on recruitment? Are there corners you can cut or is it still traditional valued recruitment in terms of choosing players? Now, point one, the way well, how we talk now, the whole th it's without curtain. Eh? It's open, it's spontaneous, it's, it's, it's from the heart. Yes. It's passion. And that's it. You must feel positive energy, passion. That's the player. Eh? That's uh, Berbatov, they said in, in Spurs. They recognize him. Also, the White Hart Lane recognized him. That's the player who had it. Stylist, elegant. Spot on. But they also had a lot of players who were maybe scouted by uh, laptops and uh, iPads who had no specific qualities. So it's very simple. I think Jimmy Sill, he also didn't have a notebook on the bench. He felt it. And now we, we, we go away from, from with so much uh, technology, you know, from, uh, from the pureness of scouting. Look, I was with Cruyff in 1994, two years before he was sacked. He played still with the team, with uh, Stoikov and, and Redsarch. And I was in 2007 with Rijkaard. So I had two periods in Barcelona. 2007 was Rijkaard. Um, he was sacked after the game when Scholes hit the ball in the top corner, you know, against Man United. But they said we have, okay, our scouting criteria is all your exception in Puyol, Keller, yeah. or tactical, Savi, or technical, Messi. So all physical, or tactical, or technical. So all Puyol, or Savi, or Messi. Does it make sense? That yeah. word. So you must be an exception in something. But Puyol was an extreme exception in his position, right? Yeah. Savi also never lost the ball, yeah. always have the intelligence, and Messi I don't have to talk about. Yeah. So you must be an exception in a quality. At Cadavis, Roquin, Gerard Lampard, or Van Nistelrooy van Basten. Finish. And we do concessions on that, I think, in Holland. We take people from foreigners, from abroad, who is second category. You know what I mean? It's wrong. So I think. The strength of scouting is the strength of the club. And in that way, I think Jimmy Sherrill, without I know him so long as you know, I know 100% he will scout from the stomach. He has it. And when I see, for example, and, 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 and not county fans, they hate Forrest. Not <laughs> Forrest no. but I think when I see him, when I see that film back from Brian Clough, I believe in miracles is the film. Yes. That's specific qualities on every position. Also that left winger, Robertson or what's John the Rob name? That Good friend of mine. I was with him at Leicester City, John Robertson. Okay. Yeah. Saying hello, I admire him. Uh, yeah. Fifth Anderson. Fifth, Fifth Anderson. yeah. So, so specific qualities are not in the laptop, are not in the iPad. They are, you know, you have to recognize them. And um, yeah, we make it too complicated because of the technology. And in that way, I always stay loyal of the time of Jimmy Cyril, Will Curve, Johan Cruyff, you know, the old times, to only scout the specific qualities with the hunger to reach the top, with the passion, you know, with, with uh, the ball is always clean, but the player also has to be clean. He must have a good, good character. He must be a good human, like Cruyff was. You must be a good human, your example function, you know? And now all tattoos, uh, yellow shoes, orange shoes, it's more picture building now. It's wrong. And that's why I admired Edwards, Smith, Jones, Carroll. They, they take the players with two feet on the floor. You know what I mean? And I hope they become also youth coaches. Because otherwise, the development of football is going too plastic, you know, to count it out. And that's why we also talk. We're from the old school. And in fact, it's still the savior up front, what scored it all, and the killer in the back, John Terry uh, Ferdinand, who protect the defensive organization. Now, and, and in that way, to come back on that year, we were not extreme enough in Moss County. You know what I mean? You can't be extreme enough. Like we talked now, to be open, who are you? Now, then you have people who criticize you, you don't care, and people who like it. But you must not care what people think. You understand? 
Yeah, I do. Be who you are. And Edgar Davids, I had everyday war with him. Van Nistelrooy, I had everyday war with him. But it's real. It's, it's pure. And after, and next day we were forgotten again. You know what I mean? And now it's all too plastic. People don't confront each other enough. And um, yeah, that is a little bit the, the old school. And uh, I, sorry. It, it's been a fact, we, we normally do about 45 minutes, but I, th I think we're on about an hour and a half. So it's been brilliant. Um, Ricardo, yeah. I mean, very, very enlightening, not just from a Notts County perspective, but from a football perspective. And I, you know, and I'm sure fans watching this now can get kind of like a sneak preview into what it's like when you sit down as football coaches in the manager's office or the coaching office and you have a cup of tea and you just talk football, don't you? And it, the time just flies by. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think that hopefully everyone watching this today you just get like is, kind of a this, glimpse is, into your world. But is this life now? Yeah. Is this life? Yes, this is live. Okay, interesting. We're still live. We're about to finish. We're about to finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're about to finish. We've not sworn once all the way through, so but we've again, done well. What I want to say, look, I'm very thankful that I was a part of Notts County. I'm very proud of it. And that's why also what we sp speak about now must not be offended by people. No, 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 no. Some people I didn't like, they didn't like me, but it's, we know it from each other. I hope, because I was more direct than some others, but 90% of that club, of the staff, was a big unity. And that's why it was uh, a big honor to be part of that. You know, and, and um, when, when, you, when we spoke two days ago, everything came back. <laughs> because you, you put it away, you know. Remember games against York City at home. <laughs> Uh, 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 Luton Town, that noble Luton Town, yeah. in the top corner, like a crazy runaway. Yeah. So uh, we, 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 we share the positive things, we learn from the bad things, and I hope Notts County, with the example of Red Bull, for example, that they come from the fourth division now in the Champions League, yeah. with only sprint capacity, with only pressing, with only hungry players. It's not my football. Because I'm more romantic, but the mix, the mix, should be uh, a trigger for more clubs to have that illusion, you know. So, Ricardo, thank you ever so much indeed. It's 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 been really really enlightening, really really interesting. We are now going to wrap up. Thank you very much indeed.